His nickname is Slick, and that's exactly what he was at first base, robbing both Hubie Brooks and Daryl Strawberry of hits. I wasn't really thinking uh, thinking too much out there, and that's probably why I made the plays. <laughs> Just reacting. That's, that's it, and if I was thinking, uh, I would have been out of this game a long time ago. Andy Van Slyke has become a fixture in our town, a first-round draft pick in 1983, who became a superstar in Pittsburgh. But he's always lived here and raised four fabulous athletes. The former MLB coach also has some keen baseball observations. And Andy is tonight's Cardinal Buick Sunday Conversation. And joining us now is the five-time Gold Glover, three-time All-Star Andy Van Slyke. All right, your take on the uh, Cardinal formula this season, beat the tar out of the bad teams and just play 500 ball against the good teams. Yeah, that's going to be a concern because, Frank, you know, early on, you take every win you can get, you take every series you can. Um, and, I, and I think that's the positive about the ball club. But having said that, um, they're going to have to start beating some clubs that are going to be in the postseason. Is Nolan Arenado exceeding your expectations? I knew you thought he was special. No, not at all. I, I still think he, he's got more to show, actually. I mean, he's, um, he's getting comfortable. You know, he's starting to hit pitches like he did a couple of years ago. He's healthy. Uh, and wait until, you know, a few months from now when everybody down at the stadium is wearing red and there's 30,000, 40,000 people screaming his name. So I, I think there's, there's more to come. You played for some guys who players love to play for, Whitey Herzog, Jim Leland. I get the impression you'd probably like playing for Mike Schill. Look at the guy. Here's a guy who's never, you know, played a professional baseball game and yet – uh, his knowledge and his, his coolness about going going about his business at the major league level is something to really respect. And I, I, that's the biggest thing. He, he, he's got the clubhouse, Frank. He's got the players. And as long as you got that and you got talent, there's no reason why they shouldn't win the whole thing. All right, some thoughts on some of these baseball rules. Starting a runner at second base and extra innings. What do you think? <laughs> what do I think? <laughs> I, I think when I go to my uh, my grandson's Little League game, that I'm, I'm, that's when I'm really watching it. What about the three batter minimum for a relief pitcher? Another joke. It's just, it doesn't speed up the game. Um, it, it handcuffs strategy. It takes decisions away from the manager. You know, maybe it's a trial run, and I hope it is a trial run, because a lot of things that, uh, that made the game great have been, unfortunately, been taken out of the game. You know, the, the breaking up the double play, the, you know, the stuff at home plate. Um, you know, dude, I don't understand. It was never broken to begin with, and, and you're, trying to, you're trying to fix something that wasn't broken. The game was, was perfect the way it was. Give me the Cliff Notes version story of you in the minor leagues playing third base with Jim Fergosi as your manager and Ricky Horton as your pitcher. Ricky was pitching. It was a sixth inning. It was the day after I got married. I hadn't slept in two days. Uh, flew into Louisville. It was a sixth inning, and the fourth error of, of the game was given up. And six unearned runs tied the game six to six in, in the sixth inning. I made all four errors. Jim Fergosi came out to the mound and said, Rick, I have to take you out of the game because you can't keep the ball away from your third baseman. <laughs> <laughs> the Tom Seaver story about the poster in your bedroom. Yeah, uh, I grew up in upstate New York. Tom Seaver was my, uh, my favorite pitcher. I was a New York Mets fan. And uh, my first weekend in New York, my first weekend in the big leagues, uh, the second game of, of the, uh, the series was a Saturday afternoon, and Tom Seaver was the starting pitcher. And I hit a 2-1 slider in the upper deck of Shea Stadium, and I ran around the bases, and I stopped at home plate. I didn't raise my hand or pound my chest, but I, I said to myself, all right, you're in the show, boy. This is what you can do. And unfortunately, there was a part of me that was sad because that, that poster – Kind of was like torn in half, you know. I, I had a home run off my hero. Your most enjoyable moment ever on a baseball field? I would say my anytime I stepped on Wrigley Field. I mean, I can say that unequivocally. There's something about Wrigley Field before they put the lights in when you play day games. You got grass and you got fans that are, you know, six feet from you. You got girls out in the outfield, you know, asking for your number and throwing stuff at you and guys throwing beer at you. It's just you know, what do you feel is what baseball should be like every day? True or false, a girl asked for your phone number or you're playing right field in Wrigley Field? Well, she crumbled up on a piece of paper. I mean, a big piece of paper. It was like the size of a baseball, and there was, there was only seven numbers on it. What'd you do with it? What did I do with it? 
I put it in my back pocket and I went, I went like this. 